Hello everybody, it's Gigabeef here, back with my Tarkov Beginner Series. Today we are going to take a look at the map Woods, specifically on how to survive or engage PMCs in the first few minutes of a raid. This video is part of my First Minute Series, so if you haven't checked out the other guides, for example Customs or Shoreline yet, I'll leave a link above and in the description to the playlist for you to take a look at these later. So as I've highlighted in other videos, players with knowledge of the fixed spawn system in Tarkov have a large advantage over those who don't, as you generally have an idea of where people might be at the start of the game. This means that players who stay near the spawn risk getting killed right at the start as experienced players rush these spawn points to snag some easy and early kills. As the raid goes on, this becomes less important, so surviving for the first few minutes should even up the playing field a lot for the rest of your PMC encounters in that raid. Woods is one of those maps that feels big at the start, but isn't really that large in size once you become more familiar with it. When I first started I remembered being confused all the time due to the lack of landmarks and just so many trees and rocks everywhere all blending together. It can give new players a hard time even simply working out where you are when you spawn in. The map itself is in a rough horseshoe shape, with east and west split by the sawmill in the middle. There's very little around on woods generally besides the sawmill itself and the scavboss Sturman, so most of the action tends to happen around the centre. This is also where most of the mid-range quests tend to be as well. For manoeuvrability around the map, there are only really two ways to move between the western and eastern sections, which creates two pinch points that drive many player encounters. You can either go south of the sawmill, through the forested area next to the wall, or you can make a dash along the beach. I often have found these routes to be counterintuitive. It feels truly awful to run through the open to the beach, but I rarely get shot down there, especially later into the raid. That beach area is sunk quite a bit lower than the sawmill, so from many angles it's actually very hard to be seen down there. Just make sure you don't run out of stamina in the open. On the other hand, it feels like if you want to guarantee bumping into other players, move along the wall specifically in the first 15 minutes of the raid, as it tends to be chock-a-block with PMCs. Whether this is because it just feels safer to travel due to the tree cover, or easier to navigate because the wall is there for the forested sections, I don't know, but I tend to meet people here all the time going around the edge. With that said, let's kick it off with the spawns on the west side of the map. As with most of the standard maps, your exfills give you a massive clue as to where you are in general. Woods has a lot of different exfills, but the guaranteed exits that you want to focus on are Outskirts, which appears for west spawns, and UN Roadblock, which appears for east spawns. Here we spawn in a divot, and looking right we can see the old station. This area becomes quite recognisable quickly, as it's a well-trodden path to UN Roadblock using the route around the wall. Here you're not super likely to run into people, as those spawns further down the road to the northeast will tend to move along the water towards the sawmill, and likewise for those further east along the wall itself. East spawns are more likely to double back to check for PMCs, so typically you have to be more careful in that direction than the other. At this next spawn, we're in an unhelpful clump of trees, but as we turn around we can see a truck behind us on the road, which is useful. This is a good spawn to point out a handy navigational landmark, which is the cooling towers of factory over the wall to the north. If you can see these, you'll be able to orientate yourself with the gate to factory exfil. At this spawn you're kind of sandwiched between east and west, as people could be at either. If you're thinking of cutting someone off, checking for players moving through the open along the water at the Ruaf roadblock exit can work out well given the lack of cover. On the other side, there are plenty of trees and it can be hard to get a spot on people, especially if they just belted across to the mill. This next one should be pretty obvious, as there are many special features here. The double boxes on the bare terrain, with some factory towers over the wall and the rocky outlook towards the water mark this as the RUAF roadblock spawn. As we saw on the last one, the primary concern is other players further down the road who can potentially cut you off if you spend time looting the boxes rather than moving towards the middle. The fact that it is so open here can cause some problems, as it's hard to get out of there fast enough. If you're feeling adventurous you can try to preempt this by moving along the road against the traffic and hunting people down. One random point is that from this spawn, if you take the shortest route, getting to outskirts can actually only take a few minutes as the distance really isn't that far. Potentially you might even surprise a few laggards from the eastbournes over there if you're fast. Here's a clip from a recent duos raid showing a typical interaction between this spawn and the previous one. I was trying to complete Therapist's quest to collect the blood sample along the water's edge, so I only took an AKMS with iron sights while my friend took the most in. We spawned at the gate to factory, and knowing that PMCs likely spawn at the other end of the road, which is where we want to go, we decided to rush straight there. Often players will loot the boxes first and then try to move on, but if you have aggressive players at the factory gate spawn, there is not enough time as we can see for this poor fellow here. I just want to take a quick pause here. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, please consider dropping a sub using the button on the bottom right, hitting the like button, and letting me know in the comments what you like or would like to see in the future. I'm super grateful to all of you who've enjoyed the content and sub so far, and I really hope to keep making videos like this for you. I've also got links to my Twitter and Twitch in the description below, so come drop by and say hi! Right, let's get back to it. 
The next couple of spawns are all kind of similar, as they are all at subsequent positions along the wall. We're still on the west with an outskirts Xville, and we have a bunch of large rocks which is the edge near to ZB016. Scav spawn regularly around this area later on, so be sure to visit if you're doing scav kill quests. This section of the wall can be quite deadly, as players can spawn so close to each other that first minute fights are relatively common, and PMCs are either catching up from behind from other spawns, or doubling back to check spawns that are behind them from ahead. At this next one along, we can see there's a unique piece of broken wall here. If you see this double wall that you can go into like a small area, you know that you're at this spawn as there is no other like it. Notice that we can still see the factory towers in the distance to help orient ourselves. Similarly to the previous one, PMCs could be on either side, so be aware. Just through experience, I tend to get into more fights with people at the mountain stash from the west border. Depending on how far through the wipe Tarkov is at the moment, this specific point is unusually hot at the start, as both of Jaeger's tasks are nearby, the shack for his very first quest, and the food drop-off at ZB016. That being said, these players are usually fairly low geared, as these quests are quite near to the beginning. Next up we probably have the best spawn that's along the west wall, as this is the last one on this side. On the right you can spot the double rocks of the sniper area of a sawmill, and behind us we have a very tall rock face that hides the mountain stash with its double loot boxes. Here we're the closest spawn to the sawmill on the west side, so the choice is yours, whether to ambush players coming from further away, or speed into the middle yourself to do whatever you came to woods to do. Next up we're going to be flipping over to the east side. This means you should be looking for UN roadblock exfills instead to tell us that we're in this part of the map. This spawn is the flip reverse of the close west spawn that we just talked about, and it is the closest spawn to sawmill in the map out of all of them. Watch out for people spawning at Mountain Stash, and moving quickly into the sawmill, as well as east gators from further along the road. The best clue as to where we are from this spot is on our left, the huge sniper scav rock is visible looming in the background. A bit closer is the other rock vantage point for sniping into the central area. I tend not to find this point too scary, as you have a bit of time before the other spawns meet you, and it's also a relatively rare spawn compared to the others, so people aren't always expecting you to be here. Overall, I think it's a pretty good spawn. Moving slightly further along the wall, when we appear here the only real landmark is the medium sized rock ahead of us. If you see barrels, boxes and two lootable containers, this is the double loot area and marks us just south of the east gate. The most dangerous thing to do here is nothing, as one of the common paths of travel from the northern spawns is around the back by this wall, so if you chill here, people are likely to come past also to try and get the loot from these two boxes. At this point we're in the second tier of distance from the sawmill, but the cover is actually pretty good on your approach if you need to go there, and there are a few scavs who spawn around this area if you need that for quests, especially along the road itself. However for scav kills, something I like to do is to sprint across into the woods from the other side, and play the scav house at long range from the edge of the tree line. People don't usually expect you to be there from this spawn, and you often hear other groups fighting around outskirts which gives a huge amount of information as to where the other PMCs have spawned, which is very very useful. Next up is a recognisable spot, as it's the highest point in the scav house area of the map. It's quite far away, but on a clear day it could be an amazing sniping point, which obviously isn't the case in my clip here, right? Just be careful that when you're up here it's kind of obvious to others that you're there, because it's a place that people really do like to sit to get a good overlook, and so it's checked frequently by other PMCs. The next batch are all scav house area spawns that can be pretty spicy. This spawn is identifiable by the impassable rock next to the wall that you have to move around to progress further. If we move away from the wall a bit, you can see the scav house even in the poor weather in this clip. You have to be on high alert in these areas as other PMCs can spawn very close, and scavs can spawn at the house right from minute zero, so there tends to be decent action down here at a few set points. I find this spawn can be quite tricky, as you have to either go past scav house to the south, risk getting shot up by the scavs with very little cover and making a bunch of noise, or moving west along the back wall into the other PMC spawns. This particular one is a little more covered from the other outskirt spawns, but I would advise extreme caution moving around in the open in this area as it is the place to get scav quest done, so people are already on the lookout. It's a quite defensible little spot if you don't want to actively engage PMCs, it is possibly worth going against the usual advice and staying here for a few minutes while things calm down. There is nothing else in this corner, and while everyone else will have their eyes on the scav house, you can just chill. Outside of this, if you want to keep scanning the horizons and keep your eyes peeled to move anywhere, that would be my best advice. I'm also going to bundle this next spawn in directly with the previous one, as all the same rules apply, except you're just a little bit further along the wall. There's another impassable rock next to the wall itself, which looks a little bit different from the last one. The real danger for both of these is the final wall spawn up near the water, which we'll take a look at next. So this next spawn is typically the one that you'll meet when you're at the two previous spawns that we've just discussed. It's recognisable by the couple of rocks scattered up here, which makes up the primary close outlook on Scav House. I think this is probably the best of the scav house spawns, as you have the high ground and you can look down onto the other spawn points whilst having a much clearer view of the scavs also. 
There's plenty of rock cover, which makes fights easier against other players. Here's two clips from recent raids showing the issues. In clip number one, we start down on the low ground spawns and we move fast up to clear any PMCs in the outskirts spawn itself. Players love nothing more than getting a good overlook on the scavs in peace, and not unexpectedly, we find them both trying to set up on the scav house overlook. Unfortunately for them, they haven't learned the hardware yet about these spawns, and they get dispatched easily with the SVD. Thanks for the punisher progression, guys. In the next one, we start at their spawn. Although I don't manage to get the kill, I'm expecting someone to move this way and I spot a low ground spawner who doesn't know where I am yet. This is obviously a massive advantage when you can get eyes on early. The final spawn that I wanted to show is this one here, which is next to the forest edge on the water side. There is a rock outcrop here that is quite useful for fighting other players in, but it doesn't look over anywhere specifically amazing so it's second tier in my book versus the outskirts spawn. I usually like to move up into the forest and play it by ear depending on what shots I hit early. Alternatively, you can be the first into sawmill from the north side, or you could attempt to cross the beach super early if you need to be on the west side for a specific task. One thing that I want to mention is that you can be shot from the other side of the lake. It is unlikely, but it is possible, so take care. So there we have it, that's about it for today. Woods is a fun map in the early and mid wipe until people start running thermals, so get your use out of it now. Seriously though, I'm not sure how it's going to go down this patch, as they're really really expensive at this point, and hopefully they stay that way. But I'm having a blast when running Woods in 12.6 so far, and I hope that you have the same experience, especially after understanding a bit better how the spawns interact with each other. So until next time, ta-ta for now, and have fun in your raids. Thank <laughs> you.